There are a lot of different thermocouples that are commonly used within the firing of ceramics. We have the type K or type N, we have the type S. These particular thermocouples have the designation based on the composition. So the type of thermocouple then that we would choose and use would be based on what it is that we're after. High degree of response time might determine the size of the thermocouple. The cost, of course, would be another factor involved. But each of these thermocouples have certain problems associated with them. One of the problems that we have in the firing is obtaining accurate reproducible temperatures. The use of thermocouples can help us determine temperature, but typically we have a problem locating the thermocouple in the desired location. We want the thermocouple close to the product that's being fired, and this can't always occur. One of the problems also with thermocouples is the fact that they drift which means that in time they will not give us the same temperature value as what they did originally. The other problem that we run into is the fact that typically we only use one thermocouple within a firing. This one spot then gives us the temperature of that location but not uniformly throughout the firing process. What's the solution? Well to start with we find that if we use uh, like pyrometric cones, that can help us determine if there is a temperature distribution within the firing. Also will tell us the basically the overall accuracy and reproducibility consistency of the firing. One of the problems that we find in the ceramic operation is comparing lab results to that of what we actually obtain in production. And the difference might be related to the type of kills. As an example, in the lab you might have electric kills. In production you might have gas kills. Each of these may produce a fire product that's slightly different. Heating rates. If we don't control the heating rates of both the lab and the production kills, we'll find that that can also produce a problem. Firing temperatures might be different. What are the solutions to these problems? Probably the best solution is uh, the use of a pyrometric cone in both the lab firing as well as the production firing. Compare these cones and determine if they are the same or if there's differences. Another problem that's typical in the ceramic community is that of the wear having a crack in it. This can be due to uh, the moisture in the wear as we fire it, and due to the way we handled it between the time we formed it and the time we fired it. It could be related to uh, one of the ingredients in the product. It could be thermal shock due to flame impingement or drafts. Some of the solutions uh, to this particular problem is we have to determine the history of the part. How was it formed? How was it dried? How was it fired? We have to analyze the failure of the crack. Was it due to the heating or the cooling? Or the crack might be related to the way it was setting in the kill, close to the heating element. We have to examine the design of the part. That could contribute to the crack. We then Following all of this, would have to run thermal expansion uh, on the part to determine inversions, uh, rate changes that might occur within the body of the material. Another problem that exists in the structural clay industry is that of black corn, and black corn is like you see right here, where the interior is showing signs of some type of bloating, improper burnout. The causes of this uh, are related to the fact that during the firing process we have improperly burned out either the binder or the carbon that's in the material. Typically the loss of ignition in this type of product is around 10%. That means that if we start with uh, 10 pounds of material in the dried state, 
After firing, it would weigh about nine pounds. This means that about a pound of material will burn out. What are the solutions to this? We can run tests like DTA, TGA, or chemistry to determine uh, what uh, is burning out and when. We have to determine then the proper heating schedule, oxygen requirements, or the burnout ranges to properly solve the problem. Another problem that we run into is that of color variation on the product. This we can observe obviously after it's been fired. Potential problems would be improper mixing of the body and or the glaze. We can have uh, temperature variations or atmosphere variations within the firing uh, of the kill. Uh, we might not have proper recirculation of the kill air. We might also have glaze application problems, either the way we put it on or the thickness of the glaze. Some of the solutions to this, we must control the body and the glaze mix. We have to control the airflow, flow the oxygen through the kill. We have to avoid such things as over firing or long soaking periods. We have to avoid under firing. And finally, the uh, control of the loading techniques of the kill itself. Periodically we're going to run into problems with blistering or pinholes. And these uh, problems can be associated uh, with the variation in raw materials. Uh, it can be uh, related to the fact that we change the firing schedule. Our sales goals are such that we have to fire a little faster. We can find that improper uh, burnout is a cause. The solution to these problems is to run DTA or TGA. This is a test that can be run to determine what is coming off, how much, and when. Uh, we can determine the proper amount of oxygen uh, required to properly fire the product. We can look at the firing schedule. Some of the other things that we have to do is to prevent hot spots or flame impingement or overfiring the product. This is a good example of a product that uh, uh, warped during the firing process. The causes of this could be large temperature distributions within the kill, could be due to variation in the size, shape, and geometry of the product kill conditions or kill performance. Also, it could be that the product has a very, very short maturing range. Some of the solutions to warpage is determine the kill profile so that we know if there are hot spots, drafts, or what the kill uniformity is. We can run thermal expansion on the product to determine uh, maturing information. We can obtain better temperature uniformity within the firing and we can possibly change the composition of the product to extend its maturing range. Crazing is also a problem that uh, constantly occurs in the firing of a glaze on a ceramic product. But the causes of crazing could be related to the raw material, uh, improper weighing, could be thermal shock, poor glaze fit between the body and the glaze, or again the product design. What are the solutions? Well, to start with, we should know what the thermal expansion is between the body and the glaze. That will help us determine the cause. Uh, other things that we should do is possibly bisque fire just a little higher. Uh, we could do things such as add flint to the glaze or add talc to the body. As I said, there are many, many solutions to the problem of crazy. What we have to find out is what the cause is. Many times you'll hear me talk about the use of pyrometric cones to solve or help solve firing related problems. What I'm showing here 
is many cones that were fired at one time in a kill to show that self-supporting cones are very consistent and reproducible. As a result, if we see differences in pyrometric cones, we can be reasonably assured that that difference in the behavior of a cone is real. The cone is telling us something about the firing process.